How's it going everyone? I'm Landon with LMR.com. Welcome to another one of our What Is videos. This time around, we're gonna be talking about all things SVO. Let's get rolling. Like any of our What Is videos, we'll go ahead and start with a little history lesson first. In the early 1980s, Ford had started to give hints that they wanted to get involved with competition again. Well, in September of 1980, they announced the formation of Special Vehicle Operations, or what we know it as SVO, under Michael Cranefuss, who was the competition director for Ford Europe. The initial vision for the SVO group was to create a series of limited production cars promoted through motorsports. The SVO team didn't waste any time, and shortly after the formation of the group, a Mustang IMSA concept was born, powered by a highly modified turbocharged four-cylinder engine. This car was to be run in select 1981 IMSA events. IMSA stands for International Motorsports Association, and is a North American sports car racing sanctioning body for road racing. In late 1980, Ford would release the McLaren Mustang, which was dubbed the M81 Project. It featured a 2.3 liter turbocharged four banger that was reworked by McLaren, a variable boost controller mounted inside of the car that was adjustable from 5 to 11 PSI, Coney shocks, higher rate springs, larger sway bars, better brakes, and a surplus of other racing inspired upgrades. They intended to hand build 250 cars, but that never happened because of the staggering $25,000 price tag. That's 88 grand in 2022 money. In total, only 11 cars were ever made. Now comes 1982. A group of 30 engineers built two SVO prototypes from 1982 Mustangs with Jack Roush prepped engines and competed in the Quaker State longest day of Nelson 24-hour endurance race in Nelson Ledges, Ohio. In this race were the likes of the Camaro Z28, 280ZX Turbo, Porsche 944, RX-7 GSL, and Toyota Supra. Of the two cars, one did finish the race. At the 1983 event, one of the SVO prototypes finished second to none other than the Camaro. A few years would roll on by, and in late 1983, the SVO Mustang would finally release as a 1984 model year and would only last until 1986. The exterior of the SVOs remained largely unchanged throughout the short three-year run. Up front, they featured a unique hood with an offset scoop to feed air into the intercooler, a wraparound front bumper that deleted the front spat, Marshall fog lights, and unique headlights. Ford changed the headlights mid-year in 1985 to the aero or flush dial lights, which was much needed as the recessed version looked kind of funky. The traditional large body side moldings that were used on other Mustang trim levels were removed, and in their place was a narrow molding that was positioned in the center of the body line. This would run the entire length of the car down the side. 1984 cars got black exterior trim, while the 85, 85 and a half, and 86 cars were changed to charcoal gray, which is known in the modern day as SVO gray. Running the length of the car at the bottom was an appropriate rocker trim piece that would transition to a front of rear tire spat that had some extra kick out, and this was also another SVO exclusive. SVO specific body color cell panels were fitted behind the quarter windows, and the roof rail moldings were also painted body color. All model year SVOs could be optioned with a sunroof. Out back, the SVOs sported a European style biplane wing, which was many iconic attributes of the car. The biplane wing was standard equipment on all SVOs except for the 86 cars, where it could be deleted if someone selected that option. The tail lights were standard issue Fox body units from the current production that featured trim color pinstriping, which was black for 84 cars, and then charcoal gray for 85 through 86. This style of tail light would be reused several years later on the 93 Cobra. Early 84 cars had an SVO sticker on the hatch and fender. 85 and 85 and a half cars had nothing on the fenders, but they did have SVO badges on the hatch. 1986 cars had SVO badges on both the fenders and the hatch. Taking a look at the inside of the SVO, it was standard issue Fox body with the exception of a few exclusivities. The seats were manufactured by Lear Sigler and featured oversized bolsters with pump up lumbar supports. Cloth was standard, but leather was also an option. 1984 and early 85 cars used piping for the seat trim and that was switched to dub stitch for 85 and a half and 86 cars. Continuing with the great attention to detail, Ford used the same cloth material from the seats and added it to the door panels even if the car was optioned with leather. The SVOs utilize a unique pedal assembly that borrowed the brake pedal from automatic transmission equipped cars, which would help facilitate heel toe driving. These were the first Fox Mustangs that came equipped with a dead pedal. Unlike other Mustangs with a dark gray interior color option, this was also referred to as charcoal gray, the SVOs did not have any black accents around the console area. 
These areas were all painted using the dark gray color. A unique leather wrapped steering wheel and horn pad with SBO logo were used along with a Hurst shifter, Hurst five speed shift knob and shift boot. The instrument cluster featured red back lighting and the gauge overlay and passenger side dash applique had a suede like effect. The SVO was the first production Mustang of any kind with four-wheel disc brakes. It was also the first Fox body Mustang from Ford with five lug wheels. The wheels were unique to the SVO, measured 16 by 7 inches, and were wrapped in 225, 50, 16 Goodyear Gatorback tires. The front rotors measured 10.91 inches, and the rears were vented 11.25 inch rotors. Over the years, the front brake calipers became a popular swap on later model Fox Mustangs because of the larger 73 millimeter piston. The front sway bars measured 1.12 inches in diameter and the rear bar was 0.67 inches in diameter. The SVOs used a specific front lower control arm that had non-serviceable built-in ball joints. These control arms would allow the SVO to have a wider front track width versus the other Mustang models. Because of the wider track width and rear disc brakes, the SVO wheels had a different offset. Adjustable Coney shocks and struts were used and as years passed, they were dubbed as Coney Reds. The power plant for the SVO Mustangs was a turbocharged Lima 2.3 liter engine. It had two valves per cylinder and was a single overhead cam design. The compression ratio was 8 to 1. The intake valves measured 1.73 inches and the exhaust valve measured 1.49 inches. Now I'll go ahead and talk about each year and some of the details related to each respective year. The 1984 SVO sold for around 16 grand. This was nearly double the price of a GT model and was reaching the sticker price of a Corvette. With the higher price tag, unconventional engine option, and its European get up, the sales success of the SVO wasn't all that great. Americans still wanted their V8s. In 1984, you could choose between black, silver metallic, medium canyon red, and dark charcoal metallic. Of those colors, Ford built 4,507 SVOs in 1984. The turbocharged four cylinder engine was rated at 100. 175 horsepower and 210 pound-feet of torque. A little side note, this was the same horsepower as the 1984 5-liter V8 Mustang GT. The turbo was an air research unit with a T3 housing and an area over radius of 0.63. This would spool up and push 14 pounds of boost back through the intake. The engine was electronically controlled via Ford's EEC version 4 processor. A fuel switch was added to calibrate the engine and modulate the amount of boost for the type of fuel that was being used, whether it be low octane unleaded fuel or what the switch implied as premium, which was meant for the highest available octane at the pump. A Borg Warner T5 5-speed transmission was mated to the 2.3 liter engine. Out back, the drivetrain consisted of a seven and a half inch traction lock diff with 345 rear gears. Wheel hop was controlled by traction bars, or also known as slapper bars, and all 1984 model year SVOs built after December of 1983 received Coney quad shocks. The 84 SVO had a TRW 20 to one ratio steering rack. Starting as an option after November of 1983, buyers could choose the comp prep or 41C option. This option would delete the air conditioning, power windows, and radio. It's unknown how many of these cars were optioned this way, so they're probably super rare. Think of the Comp Prep SVO as the Cobra R of the mid 80s. The early 1985 SVO was pretty much a direct copy of the 84 model with just a few exceptions. The rear end gear ratio was changed to 373 and the transmission received revised ratios as well since it was now a Borg Warner world class unit. Suspension changes included shocks and struts that were preset by Coney to firm up the ride. The rear spring rate was also increased and the rack and pinion was updated to a 15 to 1 ratio. In 1985, 1,515 SVOs were produced and were available in seven colors, which included black, Silver Metallic, Medium Canyon Red, Jalapeno Red, Dark Sage, Oxford White, and Medium Gray Metallic. In typical Ford fashion, well, any vehicle manufacturer really, they updated the SVO in the middle of the model year, which is why we have the 85 and a half SVO Mustang. All SVOs built after April of 1985 were designated as 85 and a half. The 2.3 liter engine was now equipped with a different intake manifold and the boost was increased to 15 PSI. The turbo was now water-cooled and the turbine was changed to a 0.48 area over radius for quicker spool up. The injectors were also increased from 30 pounds to 35 pounds per hour and an updated EEC version 4 computer was used. Dual mufflers and tailpipes rounded out the new modifications. 
With all those changes, the 85.5 SVO was rated at 205 horsepower and 240 pound-feet of torque. There were only 439 85.5 SVOs produced, making them some of the rarest birds in the SVO flock. For the 1986 model year, Ford built 3,382 SVOs, and this would also be the last year for the SVO. There were no changes to the 86 SVO except the horsepower rating was changed to 200 horsepower from 205. The federal mandated third brake light was added to the lower spoiler. The color palette in 1986 included black, silver metallic, medium canyon red, jalapeno red, dark sage, oxford white, medium charcoal metallic, which was changed from medium gray metallic, and the new shade on the block was Dark Shadow Blue. Although the SVO was short-lived, Ford would sell 9,984 units over the three-year run. My personal opinion is that the SVO Mustang was ahead of its time, and it would help inspire future performance vehicles from Ford, such as the 93 Cobra and the 93 Cobra R. No doubt about it, the SVO is a key player in the history and lineage of the Mustang, and still has its own little following to this day. We're fortunate enough to own a pretty dang good example in this 1986 Jalapeno Red SVO, which had a mild restoration some years ago. As always, we hope that you have enjoyed this What Is video. That's all we have for you today. So until we catch you in the next one, y'all know what to do. For all things 1979 to present Mustang, keep it right here with the Real Enthusiasts, LMR.com.